So uh, this is the slide uh, now where we ended uh, yesterday. Uh, basically, trying to say that uh, the basic difference uh, between the individualistic and the collectivist culture is that in the collectivist culture there is always uh, you know, a higher degree of influence from uh, the various social agents to conform to certain practices uh, which is otherwise cherished by a larger uh, number of uh, members of that very society. Many a times uh, you, know, you will find uh, good practices. A uh, very thoughtful type of uh, uh, norms which you are supposed to comply to, but at times you might come across uh, some of the practices uh, which is very difficult to be justified or cannot be justified at all, but still people confirm to it. Okay. There is a greater degree of compliance to such practices even though those who are involved in the process they suffer in that whole process itself. We will take uh, one example here. Uh, this is uh, a practice in uh, one of the temples in uh, Karnataka in Mangalore, uh, where in this very temple uh, you have a certain uh, uh, no, uh, Brahmins who will uh, have their food okay, on the leaf of uh, a plant, basically the banana leaves, okay, and then they will leave uh, you know, some food stuff there the other members of the of the society the non brahmins they are supposed to roll over it okay now imagine a situation when uh, you are in your uh, dining hall in your hostel okay a set of people come have their food leave their uh, stuff okay on the table and you are told that you have to now you know bare body you have to roll over it how many of you would do it okay but then there is a great degree of belief attached to it and therefore people practice it. Okay. Collectivist culture has uh, you know, this type of uh, situation also where conformity and compliance can go up to such extremes also. Uh, this is an example from uh, the uh, a prison where uh, the Iraqi soldiers were kept captive by the US forces okay. and as you can see here. Okay, uh, you find uh, you know, the compliance of the members of a group because there are certain authorities which tells you that fine you know these are the decorated soldiers okay, who have fought for their nation, but because they were our enemy therefore their uh, you know, uh, uniform has to be removed, they will be bare body completely nude, okay, we will tie them all together and then we will torture them. Okay. Imagine a situation if you are uh, you know, told that you have an uh, enemy who fought against you, okay. uh, but still you would say no that there is a minimum decorum of handling human beings. Okay. Uh, take the recent example, I will come back to this example. Take the recent example uh, in uh, JNK, very recently you know, there was uh, a case where uh, uh, two Indian soldiers they were uh, killed by the Pakistani forces. Pakistan kept on denying it uh, that we have not done this uh, and uh, the bodies of both these Indian soldiers okay, they were beheaded bodies, no? the head was removed out of it. Okay. Long back just before the onset of the Kargil war also similar type of incidents had happened when there was a young Indian officer. Uh, Saurav Kaliya, okay, whose mutilated body parts had come, no, the whole body intact body did not uh, come to India. Okay. And then uh, very recently uh, there was a case when uh, one of the Pakistani soldier uh, no, happened to cross the line of control, was uh, killed in the crossfire, okay. but then the whole body was returned back to the native country. Even during uh, Kargil war, many uh, no, uh, human beings who died, those human beings who, uh, whom uh, the Indians said that they are the Pakistani regulars, Pakistan said that they are not our armed forces, they must be you know from different separatist groups okay. and India had a claim because uh, you know, uh, their uh, uh, identity cards, their uh, salary details were found in their pockets which showed that they belong to uh, certain regiments of the Pakistani forces. But then uh, 
the military decides that uh, you know, all those who have died in that process and belong to the enemy camp, okay, our religious guru would cremate them according to their religious practices. Okay. Now, think of uh, you know, uh, three different stories, one uh, where you catch hold of uh, your enemy, you treat them like this. Okay. This was uh, one of the very uh, secret type of uh, photographs which was much later released. No? Uh, two, when you catch hold of your enemy and then cut uh, him into pieces okay, and you do not even refrain from uh, you know, doing it multiple times. Third case where you uh, catch hold of your enemy, okay. uh, the enemy is shot dead, but then still uh, you decide to cremate uh, the dead body according to uh, the religious faith of uh, that very individual. Okay. Uh, we won't go again into the details of it, but if you are interested, uh, do uh, read uh, Philip Zimbardo, okay, uh, who has taken such examples and talks about uh, why good man become ugly. Okay. Why people who are otherwise those who seem to be very good, at one point in time they suddenly become extremely wicked. Okay. Why good men become bad, wicked, ugly. Okay. And Philip Zimbardo has talked about it at length, okay, giving uh, all types of examples and you would find many, many examples of the Abu Ghraib jail from where this photograph belongs to. The reason uh, we have taken these examples here is that uh, you know, in a group setup, there could be a possibility where you are forced to comply to certain norms which otherwise you uh, do not admire. One example that we take uh, that we had taken from our Indian situation, of course, is an example of the collectivist culture. The other example we had taken was from an individualistic culture, but then you are in a regimented setup of the individualistic culture where the dictates coming from the top has to be obeyed. Okay. Now, if you uh, look at uh, the distinction between the practice uh, in the individualistic versus the collectivist culture, you realize okay, that in individualistic cultures, the expression of happiness is always encouraged okay, at the cost of expression of sadness. Now, this is not what I am saying, but this is what the aggregate of the research done uh, no, uh, in these two cultures, where comparative studies uh, uh, have shown these outcomes and that we are you now summarizing here that by and large individualistic culture will promote that you as an individual should certainly enjoy the privilege of expressing your uh, happiness. Whatever makes you happy, you can very freely and frankly share it with others. Okay. You need not mourn on uh, no issues uh, that does not affect you. Okay. Whereas, in collectivist culture, the opposite is uh, no usually cherished. Okay. You are sad not because something has happened to you, but because uh, no uh, uh, relative of a friend of your neighbor who was your neighbor three years ago has died. Okay, there is a long chain, but that also affects uh, your uh, emotional states. Okay. In collectivist culture, people forego negative emotions in order to support the group standards. I might not be very happy inwardly, but because the group is celebrating uh, something, therefore, I also join it okay. and therefore, uh, my the negative emotions that I have in that very situation, in that very uh, uh, given state, okay. I simply try to uh, know overcome it simply because I am supposed to adhere to the standards that the group is practicing as of now. Okay. And in collectivist culture, another important thing is that there is a less public expression of negative emotions. Okay. Uh, a very good example given uh, once in classroom by my teacher, he said that when he went for the first time uh, to Canada, his colleagues there would uh, know uh, always say, so, so how are you? And he had the habit of saying fine, like most of us. 
okay most of us would say you know when you are asked by somebody how are you fine and then uh, after 2 3 days uh, this man asked him that how can you be fine every day okay i am either good or not so good most of the days but you always tell me you are fine how does that happen okay and then it led to certain type of discussion between these two the person who asked this was uh, no um, a psychologist in making who later on become a very renowned psychologist social psychologist okay and uh, this whole discourse of uh, no cultural perception of uh, uh, how good you are or how fine you are that was uh, no uh, uh, elaborated little later okay but it's a fantastic description no when somebody asks you how you are and you say good okay not so good and you take pride in saying not so good okay whereas in uh, the other culture uh, no it could be uh, say just now uh, in the recent past we had it no uh, chilled winter morning uh, temperature was 6 7 degree no you have uh, rainfall also and still somebody asks you how are you and you very so with a broad smile you say fine okay and then you realize know that there are certain practices okay that you simply adhere to you comply to you reflect it because you belong to certain type of uh, culture the reason uh, we are uh, know talking about uh, these issues uh, are primarily that below because you belong to certain culture because culture has its own practices and you show certain degree of conformity compliance to those uh, practices because you try to tame your own emotional reactions in order to uh, adhere to the group standards and therefore your overall ability to adapt to the situation increases and more and more you show adaptation the higher is uh, the perception of adjustment level of yours you perceive yourself to be adjusted great this was an uncomfortable situation but i have handled it properly others also think oh you are a great manager who can manage diverse type of situations okay we now come to a, a different way of looking at uh, emotion this was uh, you know uh, primarily proposed by lazarus who talked about you know the appraisal of emotions okay and uh, lazarus uh, said that emotional responses are actually the outcome of internal and situational appraisal processes such that emotions induce coping activities now remember right from uh, no experience of emotion uh, to behavioral uh, reactions under the influence of emotional state we are now shifting and we are now talking about the appraisal of the emotions means how you relook at your own emotions okay and according to lazarus that uh, these emotional responses okay are actually the outcome of internal as well as situational appraisal processes how you internally appraise it and how the situation uh, you know appraises it that would actually make your uh, emotion it can make it uh, you know act in a way wherein it facilitates your coping strategies so given the type of uh, diversity that you experience okay you get a chance to uh, cope with the adversity that you are experiencing okay and all this is primarily facilitated by both the factors your internal way of looking at your own emotions and how the situation interprets your emotional state okay and based on that we will later on focus uh, no, at these two coping strategies little in depth when we come to uh, next to next uh, module where we would be talking about stress coping and resilience but just to refer to it that Lazarus proposed that uh, there could be two types of coping one the problem focused coping and two the emotion focused coping okay problem focused coping according to Lazarus is a state where one makes effort to overcome or minimize the effects of the unwelcome situation okay so you are trying to either overcome the problem or you are trying to minimize the overall uh, no effect of that very uncomfortable situation whereas in terms of emotion focused coping 
one adopts strategies to master is or endure an undesirable situation okay so emotion focused coping that way you know strategically is far different compared to the problem focused coping but right now uh, we are interested more into emotions and how they affect our uh, adjustment therefore these two coping strategies we have just referred to it we won't go into the details of it as i told you that next to next module would be on uh, stress coping and resilience and when we come to coping we'll also be talking about problem focused and emotion focused coping once again so usually what do we do okay we spend time and energy in adapting to the constraints of dealing with social and environmental demands so there are certain social obligations there are some immediate demands that our environment uh, makes okay and we spend both our time in terms of understanding it deciphering it in terms of uh, we also spend our energy in while doing that okay and once we have uh, succeeded in uh, deciphering what the demand of the situation is okay we try to find out which strategy i should adopt so that i fit you know completely into this type of a situation okay we try to adapt to it we also what we do is that we try to manage our actions without violating the social needs norms and obligations now therefore adaptation becomes a skill that one has to master okay where you do not want to violate the norm you do not want to uh, know uh, bypass the social obligations you want to meet the social needs and at the same time you also want to give an appropriate response which would satisfy you as an individual and which would satisfy your environment because there are other uh, stakeholders there in the environment okay and all of this would require an interplay of emotional processes okay which are primarily supposed to serve the social functions okay if you are incapable of uh, showing this type of an adaptation then the society interprets that you have a problem in adjustment okay let's take couple of examples say you i'm not uh, no saying that everybody who go to this profession are like that uh, but some people who join this profession which professions i'll uh, refer to it right now uh, they gradually act like this you must have come across uh, several 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 examples uh, where a patient was not offered a bed in the hospital a patient who was uh, no about to deliver a baby was uh, no uh, not even attended by the doctors okay the delivery took place outside the main gate of the hospital it happened once even in uh, kanpur also very close to us okay uh, i won't show it but i have those news clippings which says no that this actually happened so that in case somebody encounters that no no it has never happened i can show that see here is the news clip which says that it had actually happened you join a profession say like uh, the police force uh, where you do not hesitate no taking your lathi and applying it 10 times hitting somebody very hard okay uh, the recent uh, episode in delhi where you must have seen those live visuals no somebody who surrenders okay who says no 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 i am uh, no don't uh, no apply your lathi charge on me but still you take pride in doing that uh, the visual that i wanted to show you uh, was of a crpf officer okay in the recent uh, delhi demonstration case uh, where he challenges a girl okay the girl uh, no the action it's all photographs okay he challenges the girl the action is very clear that he must be abusing uh, or uh giving commands that if you do this i'll uh, no uh, punish you the girl says no 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 this is the action and the next sequence where he really goes and uh, hits the girl okay this is an example of a bomb blast in manipur no this was uh, the rickshaw puller uh, on whose rickshaw this bomb was planted you can see you no know, several of the security guards there okay this man whose uh, lower body part was blown off okay 
you can see what happened blood kept on kept on uh, you know oozing out. Somebody comes interrogates him because he knows that death is inevitable instead of taking him to hospital they ask him so tell me you know uh, who was the person who planted it uh, you know some uh, details of it. But this rickshaw puller was not taken to the hospital and within few minutes of this photograph he died. Okay. Now, think of uh, you know these examples okay. you join a profession, okay. but then you start practicing it in a very different fashion. I am sure that uh, these policemen when they would have first uh, you know uh, seen somebody suffering they also must have felt the pain. Okay. The first bomb blast, the first bullet shot, the first wound everything must have uh, you know uh, induced certain type of uh, feeling, certain type of emotion. But then how you appraise your own feeling will then start taming how you feel uh, the situation and how you feel the situation will finally decide how you react to that situation. Okay. And whether uh, your act is uh, an act of adjustment you have been able to successfully comply to it, you have been successful giving uh, the desired outcome or not depending on <laughs> which side of the fence you are uh, you would take a decisive role. Now, the salience of emotional process in adjustment if you try to understand this primarily you can divide study you remember we were trying to uh, know uh, look at emotions with respect to uh, the basic emotions happiness, sadness, fear, anger, surprise and disgust the six basic emotions and uh, we also looked at emotions with respect to their valency you know, positive negative emotions as well as directionality component in emotion approach emotion versus avoidance emotion. One uh, way of uh, looking at emotions and this is the classification given by Lazarus is that you can divide them into goal congruent emotions and goal incongruent emotions. So, right now therefore, the number of emotions has increased no? and you find that the it is not only the basic emotions other emotions have also been entertained. According to Lazarus the goal congruent emotions are like happiness, love and pride. Goal congruent uh, incongruent emotion includes sadness, anxiety, shame, guilt, envy and disgust. Okay. And now depending on certain primary appraisal factor and secondary appraisal factor we finally uh, derive this type of emotion okay. and in turn all of them influences our level of adjustment. So, what we would do now onwards is uh, that we would look at uh, you know the primary and the secondary appraisal processes pertaining to each of these uh, goal congruent and incongruent emotion okay. and then try to understand that why uh, you know do uh, people experience this type of an emotion okay, and how these emotions influences their level of adjustment. Now goal congruent emotions they would be positive in nature and they are likely to moderate our day to day things okay. and <clears throat> they also play adaptational role by sustaining our morale by facilitating coping and restoring our normal life pattern. Okay. So, happiness, love and pride okay. they will uh, know sustain the level of morale that you are uh, endowed with they will facilitate your coping and at the same time they will also help you restore your uh, normal life pattern. Okay. Now, Lazarus you know, keeps on keeps on talking about the uh, primary and the secondary appraisal processes. So, what we would do is we would take each of these emotions first we will begin with the goal congruent emotions and then we will go to the goal incongruent emotions and then we will you know look at each of the primary appraisal components and the secondary uh, appraisal components okay. trying to understand that what finally is the determinant of happiness, what finally is the determinant of uh, say pride, love, guilt, shame, disgust likewise. But before we come to it I would uh, I thought we have studied a lot. So, 
will watch a short film right now 13 to 15 minute uh, film it is an animation uh, that uh, describes of a story that uh, comes from our mythology. Uh, you must be aware of the whole story of Shravan Kumar whose prime, uh, parents were blind uh, okay. and he took them on uh, a Tirth Yatra when finally he was uh, killed by an arrow by uh, King Dasharath. Okay. Now there is a tradition of folklore in our country and uh, some of the folk artists from Rajasthan they describe this story. Okay. Uh, their whole narration has been uh, know, translated into an animated movie okay, uh, made by uh, somebody at uh, IIT Bombay. So, we will uh, just watch it. The reason I am trying to show it uh, to you is that there is a beautiful interpretation. There are two, three sequences there where one narrator recites the story in one way, gives another way of looking at it and the other uh, one says that no, 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 there is a change, there is a twist and he interprets it in a different way. Okay. So, the same thing can be approached by two different ways and he says that it was done because of this, the other one says it was done out of this. Okay. So, guilt, remorse, those components come here, therefore, we will watch this. वैसे श्रवण थोड़ा सा बड़ा या और वैसे सोचने लग गया कि मेरे माता पिता को ये नैन मेरे कारण से किए हुए अंधे हो गए तो श्रवण भगवान विष्णु के पास गया भगवान विष्णु को पूछा हे महाराज ये मेरे माता पिता मेरे कारण से अंधे हुए तो क्या करूं मैं ये नैन कब खुलेगा तो भगवान विष्णु बोला देखो आपने जैसे काउड बनवाओ काउड बनवा के आप चौरासी धाम पर तीर्थ करवाओ जब उनकी नैन खुल जाएगा तो श्रवण ने काउड बनवा के और तीर्थ यात्रा पर चल पड़ी पर मेरी कहानी में तो ऐसा नहीं फिर से वेरिएंट हर बात में दो बात होती है फिर आगे बताओ ना शरण के घर वाली रेहू थी अपने सासू ससुर की देखरेख अच्छी नहीं करी थी अच्छा माता पिता को साधारण और श्रवण को अच्छा खाना हाँ तो श्रवण को सामने आ गई थी तो श्रवण को सोचा भाई ये तो सारा पाप मेरे ऊपर हो गया तो जा कर के पूछता है विष्णु भगवान को ये प्रभु मेरे माता पिता का इतना मेरे ऊपर दोष है तो ये इसका फर्ज कैसे होता है तो विष्णु ने बताया तुम कावड़ गढ़ा करके अपने माता पिता को पैदल यात्रा कंधे पे लेकर के चौरासी यात्रा कराओगे तो अपना फर्ज उतर जाएगी तो वहाँ से श्रवण अपने माता पिता की कावड़ आला लीला बांस कटाया कावड़ ली गढ़ाए कावड़ में माता पिता को बिठा करके लार ले पाप के और आग ले धर्म के ऐसे करके वहाँ रवाना हो गया फिर वही बात तो वही हुई यात्रा के लिए चल पड़े फिर भी एक में तो वो प्यार से गए और दूसरे में प्रायश्चित करने के लिए गए आगे क्या हुआ donated out of uh, love the other one donated out of anger okay process remains the same the interpretation varies okay the reason i was trying to show this animation film was uh, let's see you have this appraisal process that lazarus talks about that incidence in life is one but how you appraise it okay will provide a color to it they say that we belong to the same dynasty and then a grand old lady comes but we are not interested into that part. What we were primarily interested was uh, that for uh, one event of life, for one of the reactions of life, there could be multiple way of interpretation okay. and how you interpret it, how you appraise it, that actually you know gives you the feeling of a particular emotion. So, if you look at uh, the appraisal process of happiness, okay, 
the first three are the primary appraisal components, then you have uh, the secondary appraisal components. Now, look at the primary appraisal components. If there is a goal relevance, then any emotion is possible, including happiness. Means that the goal that you are trying to uh, achieve should be relevant to you. Okay. Two, if there is a goal congruence, then only positive emotions are possible, including happiness. Okay. So you sh your goal, uh, no. Uh, seems to be congruent to you and therefore, it uh, you know, leads to the positive experience of emotions. And third primary uh, appraisal component that the type of ego involvement okay, is not relevant. Okay. So, the involvement of your ego is not important. Okay. You find that the goal achieving the goal is relevant to you and you also realize uh, the goal to be congruent. Okay. The secondary, uh, the secondary appraisal components, blame and coping uh, potentials are irrelevant. Okay, so you are not looking for uh, blaming somebody. You are not looking at the coping potential of uh, the activity. If future expectations are positive, we expect the good fortune to continue. Okay, therefore, so the future expectation is positive in nature. Okay. You construe that this would continue and if the overall life outlook is favorable in general, the existential background is that which is essential to feel happy. So, overall you find that uh, life circumstances in and around you uh, is favorable. If future expectation and the existential background are guarded or unfavorable then happiness is apt to be muted or undermined. So, basically the secondary approachal components are uh, that you do not find the relevance of blaming somebody, you do not find the uh, coping uh, potential uh, component involved there, but what you realize is that what you expect the outcome of uh, the event you expect to be positive. Okay you expect that this was continue. So, there is a perception of continuity of the process okay. and overall the ambience of the whole experience is favorably directed okay. and hence you derive a positive emotion out of it. Okay. But if you realize uh, that the future expectancies are uh, not seems not to be favorable enough. Okay then you can undermine your level of happiness. Okay. All other appraisal components including type of ego involvement are not essential. So, basically what Lazarus says is that there are some primary determinants, there are some secondary determinants. Okay. You use these determinants to you know, interpret a given uh, situation and this will finally, uh, make you realize whether you should be happy or not. So, the state of uh, emotion is dependent also on the appraisal process, the outcome of how you appreciate the whole process. Okay. Similarly, uh, if you look at uh, the pride component, the primary appraisal component that if there is a goal relevance. Okay, then any emotion is possible. You remember the primary appraisal process for uh, happiness also said the same that there has to be uh, relevance of the goal. Two also remains the same okay, that if there is goal congruence then any emotion is possible. It could be happiness, it could be pride. Third, if the type of ego involvement is enhanced is uh, enhancement of one's self and social esteem, then the potential emotions are narrowed to pride, happiness and relief. Now, in the earlier case, in the case of happiness, okay, we said that that ego involvement is not relevant, but here in the case of pride, okay, ego involvement plays a role and this ego involvement enhances uh, you know, one's self esteem as well as one's social esteem. Secondary appraisal process, if credit is to oneself, then pride occurs. So, overall you, you realize 
that the credit for this goal fulfillment, this goal achievement goes to you. So, you are given the credit, then you derive pride out of it. Okay. So, once again you evaluate the whole of uh, the experience gets evaluated based on goal relevance, based on goal congruence, based on ego involvement, okay, the three primary determinants and the fact that you should finally, get the credit for doing whatever has been done. Okay. If that happens, then you experience pride. Third case, once again you find goal relevance, goal congruence, okay. both are there and it can lead to any positive emotion including happiness, pride and love. Now, in terms of ego involvement, if the type of ego involvement is desire, desire of mutual appreciation. So, the key component here is the desire for mutual appreciation, which is affirming to one's ego identity, then the emotion possibility is narrow to love or if it is not love, then at least to liking that you like each other. If to this is added sexual interest or passion, then love is romantic rather than okay, uh, just being a search for a companion. Now, you see there is an inter interesting uh, description you know, when it comes to how you interpret it. Happiness, pride, love, these three were our uh, goal congruent emotions. In all the three cases, goal relevance has to be there, goal congruence has to be there. For happiness, ego involvement is not needed. Uh, for uh, pride, ego involvement is needed, but it should you know, lead to uh, self esteem or social esteem. In the case of uh, love, okay, ego involvement is there, but this ego involvement requires mutual appreciation of each other. So, if I love somebody and therefore, I appreciate him or her, then I should be also appreciated for certain characteristics. If there is a unilateral investment of such type of the, a thing, then it does not lead to the experience of love. Two, this ego involvement also affirms your ego identity. Okay. If it does so, okay, then you experience love or if it is not so intense to make you experience the love, then at least it will make you feel little attracted towards that individual. Okay. And if you add the passion component, sexual interest component, okay, then this love becomes romantic. Okay. So, there is a clear description no, of how you appreciate your own uh, goal congruence, goal relevance and ego involvement in an act that will decide what you will experience. Secondary appraisal component, okay. so in the case of love no secondary appraisal components are involved except perhaps future expectation is there, you expect something in the coming future, which then positively favors love. Okay, but when negative okay, prevents you or undermines your love. So, basically you also see what is going to be the consequence, the byproduct of this relationship. If it is positive, it is love. If you realize that uh, no, the outcome is not going to be positive, then you lose interest in that individual. Okay. So, once again you see in all the three cases that we discussed here. Okay, Okay, happiness, love and pride in all the three cases which we told that see these are goal congruent emotions, only three pro basic uh, processes were involved goal relevance, goal congruence and ego involvement. How you and both two factors were stable, no? goal relevance was there in all the three cases, goal uh, congruence was there in all the three cases, it was only ego involvement and the experience in the case of happiness and uh, pride and futuristic type of uh, uh, no, derivations in the case of love, which finally, determined whether you would experience a particular emotion or not. And if you experience it, then what would be the flavor of that uh, emotion. Okay. These three emotions, uh, happiness, pride and uh, love, these three are considered to facilitate your uh, adjustment level. No? If by and large you are a happy type of an individual, okay, uh, you also make others happy. 
okay, your presence is welcomed by others. If you take pride in doing certain things, okay, in turn others also you know, consider that this is a man of worth. If you assign him a task, certainly the goal will be accomplished. Okay, so, you also derive pride out of it, the society also overall appreciates your achievement. Okay. And if you show uh, your ability to love people, to appreciate people, okay, to get affiliated to people, in turn people also return back all these uh, three things in return, in certain quantums. Okay. And therefore, all these three goal congruent emotions adds to the level of adjustment that one aspires to achieve. Okay. 